Hello, hello, and welcome to Dare to Nerd, where I do nerdy things. Today I want to make an Eye of Sauron D20. I want to make a little bit of the tower as well as the eye and put it in my giant D20. So, without further ado, let's get started. For this project, I learned how to make glass cabochon eyes, which I'm so excited about because they look so cool. And I tested one out ahead of time. It turned out really good. I'm very pleased with how it looks. Uh, by the way, glass cabochons are different from the decorative glass beads that you would put in uh, vases. So I got different sizes and I got some oval ones because when you look at the eye in the tower, it has a more oval shape. And I just found some pictures uh, online and printed it out on photo paper. And I learned a really cool trick from storybook creatures on DeviantArt. I'll include that link in the description. But basically, instead of using glue or Mod Podge, we just use clear nail polish. And so the first thing to do is to just put a, a coat of clear nail polish over the, the pictures that you want to put in the cabochons and let that dry. And this will act as a sealant to help protect it. And after that is dry, then you can go back over with another layer and that acts as essentially the glue that will hold the glass onto the picture or hold the picture onto the glass, however way you want to say it. Uh, be sure to polish up those cabochons first and get all the icky, icky sticky fingerprints off of it before you put it down on the paper. And just move it around, press it down, make sure there's no air bubbles inside. The one thing that I found with this trick that was mentioned by storybook creatures is the glass tends to slide on the picture so I kept having to come back and readjust it to make it centered so that is that is one one downside to this method but other than that it went very very well after a few hours it was dry enough for me to cut out so you just take the scissors, you just cut them out and trim around the glass as close as you can cut. And voila, it looks great. I wanted there to be a floating effect of the eye between the two spires in the tower. So here I'm just adding some very, very thin fishing line uh, and securing it between two cabochons. And I'm just going to use regular super glue uh, to, to piece them together. Um, one thing I did do with this project that I want to change next time is I used a double-sided eye, meaning there's an eye in the front and an eye in the back. And if I do this project again, I'll make there actually be a front and a back with the back having a more fiery look. But the floating effect did work. Look at that, it's floaty. <laughs> One thing I didn't like about sticking two cabs together is that there's this little white line where you can see the paper. And so I tried to cover that up with some just red, orange, yellow paint. I tried to kind of give it that, that fiery uh, look and color so that it blended in a little bit better with the eye and wasn't just this white line sticking out. But 
as you can see, it doesn't look great, that aspect. If anyone has any ideas of how to fix that, uh, if there's any better methods, uh, let me know down in the comments because that is one thing that I wasn't sure about. And now to sculpt the tower. I used uh, a little bit of aluminum foil uh, just to try and use less clay because this would be the uh, uh, oven bake clay. And I just started uh, forming and sculpting the best that I could to match what the tower looks like and to match the size of the eye that I was using. Uh, one Another thing I had trouble with was that the clay keeps kind of cracking and I did warm it up in, in hot water and I used the water to try and smooth out some places, but this is a consistent problem that I have had with clay and I don't know if it's just because I'm using old stuff or what. So if you y'all have any ideas as to why this keeps happening to me and how to fix it, I would love to know. Another question I had was, why does it look like a deer hoof? <laughs> it looks like a deer hoof. <laughs> All right, so after I put in a few more details, I looked at the size of it compared to the D20 I want to cast it in. And it, as you can see, it is a little too big. So what I did was just take my sharpest knife and chop away. Boom. <laughs> you could see a little bit of the aluminum foil in there. Eh, that's okay. So now it's going to fit inside the D20 much better. I will have to clean up that angle a little bit and straighten it up, but that's okay. I'm also going to straighten up the spires. Make sure everything looks good. And before I pop this little guy in the oven, I'm going to drill a couple of holes in the spires just so I can fit the fishing line through to suspend the eye. And with the sculpture baked, it is time to mix a demold. So I added one part A to one part B in my measuring cup and pretty pink swirls. So I wanted to make a resin cast of the tower uh, for a couple different reasons, but mainly because a, roll, a die will roll better uh, if it is made out of the same, all the same material. Uh, I was worried that if I just put this heavy clay thing in a resin die, that it would be weighted, it would be off balance and would not roll correctly. So that's the major reason why I'm doing this. I also discovered that the tower fit perfectly inside my silicone measuring cups which are very flexible, as you can see. So that made it so much easier to pop out the mold once it had cured. And now to extract the clay tower, I cut very carefully and it wasn't until I got to around this part that I realized I should have cut from the bottom to get the tower out. Because of all the little points and all the little, the little, the spires, the way they face, it would have been so much easier to extract from the back instead of the way I'm doing it here. Watch me struggle. Yeah, this was a struggle. Little pieces broke off 
in parts, which then I had to get the uh, needle nose pliers and try to get those out of there. It was a, it was a pain. I will not be making the same mistake again. But I had my silicone mold, so now I can pour the resin. Uh, I did uh, cut out a little hole at the bottom of the mold and just taped the rest of it up uh, because I figured it, the resin would have an easier time seeping into the points and all the little areas if I poured it from this direction. And I just poured it very slowly in a nice long stream. until it was all the way to the top. And after 24 hours, I took it out, see how it turned out. Once again, demolding this thing. There we go. Okay. There was a large part that, for some reason, the resin didn't get to. I'm not entirely sure why at the bottom there, but I can sand that down. Didn't turn out too bad. There was a lot of cleanup involved in this. I did take my little Dremel and just kind of made some points sharper, took away some raggedy edges, you know, cleaned it up. With the resin tower finally sanded down and washed and dried, I could finally start painting it. So I just started out with a, a black base coat and after that dried, I started with essentially just dry brushing. I just started with a really, really dark gray and just kept going around with lighter and lighter shades. And I added uh, a little bit of silver paint as well to try and give it that metallic feel to it. A little bit of that metallic sheen. And I just kept dry brushing until it had the the kind of shade and look that I wanted that that best seemed to match the tower uh, in the movies. Speaking of the way the tower looks in the movies, I noticed that because Sauron's eye is so bright, even though the tower is probably just all gray metal, the part that holds the eye is constantly reflecting that light and is constantly this bright gold orange color. So I tried to emulate that with some, some red, orange, and yellow paint. And I just went over it with a thin layer of gold paint to try and give it that metallic sheen. And hopefully this will uh, give that reflective effect. And I just popped the string through the holes in the spires. And secure it with super glue. When the glue is dried, just snip off the excess fishing line as close to the tower as possible. And the tower is completo! Look at that! Look at the shiny! Ooh, it's looking good! And it is finally ready to be placed inside the D20 mold. Wahahaha! <laughs> now, before I actually put it in the mold, I did put a little bit of resin at the bottom just because I was trying to keep the edge of the tower from poking at the sides of the dice. So there is already a little bit of resin inside. And it wasn't completely dry because I wanted it to kind of adhere to the tower. 
Ho oh, ho ho, it fits perfectly. So at this point, I did not have alcohol inks to mix in with my resin. I hadn't ordered those yet. They are on their way for the next project. However, I discovered if you put the tiniest amount of acrylic paint, just, just a little schmidgem, it does not blend well with the resin. In fact, it has a kind of particle-y look. You can see the particles of paint and they just kind of float in there, which for this project I liked because, think about it, it's Mordor, right? The very air you breathe is a poisonous fume. It is smoky and ashy and sooty and dark all the time. So for I thought that would be a really good idea for this project. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm hoping that I can get that night, that ashy look to the air around the tower without obscuring too much of the eye and the tower itself. And just pour that in, in a slow, long stream. And for the top, once again, I wanted to give it a, uh, a dark, cloudy look. Now, I messed up here because the, I, it, it, the resin had already cured too quickly. Um, so that, as you'll see, did not end up well. 24 hours later, I demolded the dye. You can already see there's a big bubble on top, which I was very upset about. Uh, I ended up filling that in with UV resin and just carving the, the number into it with a uh, diamond tip on my Dremel. One thing that turned out well was the reflective metal effect from where I painted the, the gold and red on the tower. It really looks like it is reflecting the light from the eye and it has a nice glow. So that turned out well. After filling in the larger holes with UV resin, I started sanding it down, uh, going from very, very rough sandpaper to very fine sandpaper. And you can see all those little white specks. Those were tiny, tiny holes uh, that got filled in with dust from the sanding. So I'll take care of those in a minute. Uh, after sanding, I polished it up with some Plastex and that helped with the clarity quite a bit. Uh, but it still is too dark to see a lot of the details in the tower and even the eye. Uh, not just because of those little holes, but because of the quote-unquote cloud effect that I attempted on top. You can see the top of it is a lot darker. So I will not be doing that if I make another one of these die. I used gold paint to paint in the numbers. You can see that's my two that I carved into the top. It's not great. It's not terrible. Uh, what I did while I was uh, painting the numbers is I went around and just dabbed the brush over all the tiny little uh, bubble pocket marks that had popped up all along the surface. And so it has now a kind of a, a, like a glitter effect almost. I, I like it a little bit. I don't like that there's that many bubbles. I really don't. I think I uh, heated the resin too much uh, before I poured it, before I mixed it. So there was less of a cure time and the bubbles did not have a chance to rise all the way and, and pop, they got stuck. So I will take that into account the next time I am making one of these.
but the gold did help make it look better. And this is the final result. The plastics helped a great deal in making it clearer. Uh, however, as I said before, the next time I do a die that has a character or a scene in it, I am not going to add color to the die. I'm going to keep it clear just so it's easier to see. Uh, and also another thing I'll change is I will not heat up the resin as much in the hopes that uh, the bubbles will have time to pop. And a third thing I will change is if I do the eye again, I will face it towards a flat surface instead of a corner so that uh, it doesn't have that split effect that you can see right there. <laughs> So, let's see how it rolls, shall we? Roll number one. Nine. Roll number two. Uh-oh, also nine. Roll number three. Eleven. Whoop, come back here. Eighteen and a four. So it is rolling a variety of numbers. However, I did do a saltwater test just to make sure, and here I discovered a problem. The 19 consistently came to the top no matter what I did. So there must be a bubble somewhere between the tower and the bottom resin. That's the only thing I could think of. So the next time I do this, I will be a lot more careful of that as well. I would not use this die as a, a rolling die. It's technically supposed to be a countdown die anyway because of its size, but that is one thing I will take into consideration for my next project. So overall, I cannot call this project a success because of all of the little problems with it. Uh, however, I did learn a lot of valuable lessons during this project that I will apply to my next RT endeavor. And I really want to try this again because it's a cool idea. I love the idea of the Eye of Sauron, not just the Eye, but the Tower as well in this giant D20. So I will try to make this again and maybe I'll uh, make a short video on the update if it is much better than this particular die. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment, and I will see y'all for the next nerdy project. Bye!